what's his swagger like? What's his swagger like in private compared to during the presidency and before in 15 and 16? Well, there were times, uh, you know, I mean, 16 was all just great fun, wasn't it? He was the outsider. He was underestimated, a long price at the bookmakers. And I think he himself just thought, you know what, what the hell? Let's just give this a go. And of course, when he won, I think he was really as shocked as almost anybody at 2020. Very, very different. And of course, we had the Mueller inquiry. We had the endless Russia hoax, which happened on this side of the pond as well. We finished up with two impeachments over Ukraine. Uh, difficult not to get beaten down by all of that. And, you know, look at what you got now. I mean, there he was in a courtroom not so very long ago. Other cases mounting up against him. Uh, you know, he he's going to have to be incredibly resilient to get this through. Uh, they're not going to make his life easy. But do you know something? I've never met anyone who's tougher, frankly. I can't imagine anybody else that would have put up with that level of abuse. But this guy, he really is as strong as an ox. And certainly last night when I saw him, he was in pretty ebullient form. You should already have it favourited if you've got Flash. You should get the podcast. Check it out on YouTube as well. All part of GB News, the wonderful uh, Nigel Farage. Sitting down with Donald Trump. We'll uh, play some highlights for you this time tomorrow. But you can see it all live. Uh, by this time tomorrow night on those formats. Uh, now, about the coronation, you put out a tweet which got a bit of a reaction, surprise, surprise, uh, which is that you think there's a country that should be there and they could have Harry's seat if they need it. Well, absolutely. I think the fact that Taiwan is not invited to send a representative is a very bad thing indeed. I mean, here's this, here's this island, incredibly industrious, great people, um, and they've not been invited, which basically means that the British government has kowtowed to the demands of China. And, uh, yeah, Meghan's not coming, so let the Taiwanese Prime Minister have Meghan's seat, is what I would say. But it just shows you, doesn't it, Paul, the influence, the power, the money of China. And it's there, deep-rooted in all of our governments. Now, it's not an accident uh, when the King's sister is willing to give an interview, let alone in this particular week. A couple of highlights stand out. First here, the conversation about a slimmed-down coronation. I think the slimmed-down was, was said in a day when there were a few more people around to make that seem like a justifiable right. <laughs> comment. The world um, changes a bit. It changes a bit. I mean, it doesn't sound like a good idea from where I'm standing, I have to say. I'm, sure it I'm not well. quite sure what else... You know, we can do. And about her brother? <laughs> well, you know what you're getting, because he's been practising for a bit. <laughs> and I don't think he'll change. Um, you know, he is committed to his, um, his own level of service, and that will remain true. I've always liked Princess Anne. She gives no letter from the alphabets, does she? <laughs> She's amazing, and she pretty much is the hardest working royal. Um, you know, she loves going about her duties, her engagements, got her own huge passions. And remember, a very distinguished horsewoman in her own right. So, no, I'm a big fan of Princess Anne. And you can see there, can't you, a little bit of tension in the family. You know, Anne wants to keep it quite traditional. Charles clearly wants to be a bit more of a moderniser. But look, there's nothing particularly unusual about that. You know, of course, the monarchy has evolved and changed many times over centuries. We've just got to hope and pray that King Charles gets that balance right, because if he spends too much time appeasing those who don't like the monarchy anyway, but perhaps putting off those that are natural supporters, then that would be a mistake. Now, uh, we know that there are plenty in the Western world who believe that Western countries are amongst the most racist. Where do the UK uh, land on a uh, global survey of racism? Well, despite being told that we are the most despicable country on earth, we, of course, invented slavery. Nobody else has ever done it through human history. We are uniquely evil and bad, inherently so, and all of our institutions are institutionally and systematically racist. And yet, on this poll, we come out as pretty much the least racist country in the world, which must have really upset so many of the taxpayer-funded NGOs and extreme left-wing groups. But, of course, there's no surprise in this whatsoever. You know, I mean, just think about it. In the whole of human history, this is the only country that has forged good relations with its former colonies. We've done it via the Commonwealth, and we've done it because our former colonies see us 
as fair-minded and decent people. And compared to the, all the other European countries who, who had empires, uh, I think our setup is pretty remarkable. Um, can we reload that graphic? Uh, you, you can't see the return vision where you are in Scotland, but uh, we just uh, put up the list of the most racist countries. It was a blink and you miss it. What's the number one country? Can we put that graphic up again? What's apparently Iran, Russia, <laughs> Japan, China? <laughs> Uh, are the most racist. Uh, well, you know, I would have thought it would have been UK, USA, Australia. Anyway, surprise, surprise, that's the case. Uh, Nigel, where will you be on Saturday and would you be standing um, to attention and swearing allegiance? I will be outside Buckingham Palace at Canada Gate, uh, where, of course, you were for the Queen's funeral just those few short months ago. Um, and I'm going to be broadcasting all day for GB News on what is a big historic day and I'm just crossing my fingers. We don't get these idiot animal rights lunatics disrupting the whole thing. They don't think that horses should even be used. They are a very, very dangerous, small cult. So it's fingers crossed that everything goes smoothly. All right. Looking forward to your coverage there. So you can see it on the Flash app or watch it uh, on YouTube with uh, GB News. Lovely to talk to you, mate. We'll talk to you again very soon. Thank, Thank you. you.